Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for being here, um, those who are in the audience and those who are tuning in um, on Facebook Live. Um, this is going to be an exciting conversation, um, a conversation with the women who have served as Franklin County Commissioners. Um, I want to remind my guest panelists to turn on your microphones because they are off currently. So if you want to turn them on, um, that would be great. Um, I am Franklin County Commissioner Erica Crawley, uh, and today I have the honor of um, asking questions and having a really good conversation with some significant women um, who have made an impact on Franklin County. Um, and this is in recognition for Women's History Month, of course. Um, so we have seven out of the eight women, including myself, that have served this community um, as a commissioner. I do want to take this opportunity to recognize the service of Arlene Shoemaker, one of the first women elected to Franklin County's board. Unfortunately, she was unable to be with us today. Um, at one point, this board was made up of exclusively women in 2007 when Commissioners Kilroy, Brooks, and Brown were in office. <laughs> we are fortunate enough, yes, to give a clap for that. Maybe we will have that again someday. Not to say anything is wrong <laughs> with my colleagues. I serve with the best commissioners um, in the state, uh, and I will argue probably the nation, um, so not trying to kick them out, but um, I, you know, something about women. We are the Diva Caucus. Even when <laughs> we are the Diva Caucus. They are honorary divas. Um, they are so great. I told you. Um, but before we get into the questions, I would uh, love for my panelists to um, say their names and if you could just say briefly the time that you served on the Board of Commissioners. And I'll start um, to my right, my far right. You started with the only one who didn't turn her mic on. <laughs> I'm Mary Jo Kilroy. I served uh, as a Franklin County Commissioner for eight wonderful years uh, from 2001 to 2009. Thank you. Good afternoon. I just want to thank you, Commissioner Crawley, for gathering us for what I know will be a fun conversation. Uh, my name is Dawn Tyler Lee, and I probably am the shortest serving commissioner ever, uh, having served from May to July of 21. Welcome. Thank you for being with us. <clears throat> I'm uh, Paula Brooks, and I'm trying to remember, Mary Jo, do we, <laughs> I know we ran in 2004, <laughs> so I guess we were seated in 2005 um, through 2012. Um, and it was a blessing and an honor to serve. Thank you for having us today. Thank you. I'm Marilyn Brown, and I had the honor to serve when I was elected in November of 2006, and I stepped down in May of 2021. I'm Dorothy Teeter, and I'm probably the oldest one here. Uh, and I've had to really think about how I did <laughs> But I, uh, I've served from 85. Is that right, Andy? Yeah. you <laughs> came after me. Um, no, yeah, that's about right. 84, 85, whatever the beginning of the term was. Um, and retired the end of 2000 right at the end of 2000. I served 60 years, and it was wonderful. Went through a lot of, started out with all Republicans, believe it or not, and uh, got better Got better after we got a Democrat or two on. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Fran Ryan. I don't know Dorothy. I think we're about the same age. I'm a, uh, <laughs> we, won't, we won't dicker with a year here or a year there. <laughs> but anyway, I, I had the privilege of being the first one appointed uh, and uh, to serve as a commissioner, and it was it was a great. Um, I was there until uh, Dorothy uh, had the privilege of, of uh, running, and uh, 
she beat me, which was okay. <laughs> we we uh, we served. We were good friends, and we're still good friends. But I think the thing that I remember most is that uh, whatever we did, I think we paved the way for a whole wonderful group of women to run and serve. So this is a great opportunity. Um, and again, I'm Erica Crowley. I was appointed uh, to fill the seat of uh, Commissioner Brown when she retired, and um, and, and also uh, Commissioner Don Tyler Lee uh, stepped in once uh, Commissioner Brown retired and served as interim until my appointment. And so I started uh, July 1st until till present. And so we'll go ahead and get right into the questions. And so, Fran, if you don't mind me. Today, Fran, um, it makes sense to start with you, um, our county's first female commissioner. Um, yes. As um, being the first, if you would be willing to share with us, um, and you probably have several, but uh, one of your most proudest moments. For being a commissioner. Yes, yes. absolutely. Absolutely. I think one of my proudest moments was the seeing the cre doing a, a lot of work on the aging uh, programs that Franklin County Office on Aging is uh, now into, and that those early days of of uh, watching the county grow and and work with the city, and at, and at that time, uh, those of us who have served in council, we could see this growth happening. It was slow, but it was growing, and we were able to connect with the county. And I think that partnership is so invaluable. People call. All the time, I get calls from all over. How do you how do you guys manage this partnership? And and we do, and it's 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 tremendous. So all of the seniors, all the programs that we've had, Operation Feed, all of that was started all back then. And uh, so I'm really proud and and uh, happy that I could be a little bit part of that. Um, absolutely, and I mean you've been working with the Office on Aging uh, for decades. When I first became um, the commissioner, I came out uh, to Huntington Park for the opening day, and you were there. <laughs> the Office on Aging was there um, with their table set up, and I'm, it's always good to see Fran, but she's always, um, you know, advocating for our aging and making sure that they have um, the resources that they need. So thank you for your continued commitment to the Office on Aging. Um, so, Dorothy, I... Um, uh, would like to go to you next since you served um, from 1985 to 2000, um, which makes you the first elected female county commissioner. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you would be interested or to, you know, share some of your proudest moments or what made, motivated you to run for office um, to begin with and, and then serve 15 years. Well, I came off of Columbus City Council, um, and like Fran had done, and um, I, I remember, the only thing I remember was they asked my husband first to run for this office. <laughs> <laughs> and he said no. <laughs> So I just kind of I kind of waited, and so then they asked me. <laughs> the only reason I even got to run for city council was I was a woman, a Republican woman, living in Columbus, living in the city limits of Columbus. So that's why I got to run there. Um, but they asked me to run, and I did, and I won. And uh, I don't know the the biggest thing I think that we did was we built the tower you know, the the county courthouse tower. And I remember one time going to the editorial board for the dispatch, you know, one of these <laughs> election interviews, and I was asked um, why, you know, we spent all that money to build a tower. And I just said to them, I said, these people, these pe county workers need a good place to work just like anybody else. And I never heard another word then about the, the county courthouse. And of course, we've it's even <laughs> expanded more than that now. The judges wouldn't move. The common police judges wouldn't move. So they didn't get a new building at that time, or get part of a building at that time. They had to stay where they were. No kidding, they absolutely would not. They didn't want it. They knew it had asbestos, so 
They wouldn't move. <laughs> and and uh, so we just kind of left them alone and let them worry about it. And, uh, but uh, I think building the, the courthouse building was, was the, the proudest thing I did. And uh, frankly, it was Roger Tracy you know, who got elected when I did, um, and he'd been county auditor, is that right? Was he auditor? But anyway, he's the one that really pushed for a new building <laughs> because I think he recognized that we really need more than wh wh what we had. Something just nicer, you know. People start dressing better and everything <laughs> the new building. <laughs> so, but I think that's the proudest thing I did. Well, thank you so much for sharing. And um, just in general, when it comes to running for office, um, women have to be asked. Um, and hopefully that's changing now. We just, you know, put our hat in the ring and, and step up. But on average, it takes um, about women to be asked about seven times. Um, so it's interesting that they asked yeah. your husband and then they <laughs> asked you. Um, and we are so thankful for your service. <laughs> um, and so, Mary Jo, I'll go next to you. Um, if you would be willing to tell us what um, some of your proudest moments or, or one that really sticks out and what motivated you to step up. Well, you know, first I, my first run for office was for school board and served for eight years on the school board in Columbus. And after I decided I wasn't going to do that anymore, although it was a, important work and I had children in the public schools, you know, I was going to step back from public office and go back to private life. But um, our county chair, Denny White, he kept persisting and um, urging me to run for Franklin County Commission. And the argument he used was that, Mary Jo, the county is engaged in all kinds of issues around families and children and social work. This is right up your wheelhouse. This is where you want to be if what you want to do is to continue your work serving the children of our community. Um, so I ran, and I have to say this issue about women needing to be asked and waiting to be asked, uh, women need to get over that. Okay. You know, men don't wait to be asked. They see something, they go for it. Yeah. Women, you need to do the same thing. Run if you want to run. Follow your passion. And in terms of my work as a county commissioner, it's really hard for me to pick one, just one thing. But I think um, the area of housing was very important when I was there. Um, we worked on a, it was in the midst of foreclosure um, epidemic in the community at the time. We worked on a, a, a foreclosure task force. We started mediation services around um, housing and foreclosures. We had a, a, an effort to fund programs for more mediation counselors for foreclosure services and also to address the issue of homelessness. We started the Housing Trust Fund and, uh, and devoted some money um, from the uh, housing transfer fee into a fund for homelessness services as well. So housing was a big issue, uh, as well as health care and the environment. Those were really my focus as a county commissioner. And, and housing continues to be um, a, a focal point, obviously, is one of the social determinants of health, but just as um, this area is growing, I mean, the nation is just saying it, we don't have enough um, housing uh, for the demand, um, and so, you know, that's an effort that will continue to be number one priority for Franklin County. Um, so next, Paula, I will go to you. If you would be willing to... Um, you know, share some of the accomplishments that you're proud of, and, and then if you would be willing to answer what uh, you believe has had the greatest impact on your success. Hmm. Well, uh, first of all, I'd like to applaud every woman up here because um, there are remarkable people here who have done remarkable things. Thank you for your legacy that you, each and every one of you, have, have left. And, I know Mary Jo, um, I was privileged to serve with, um, and I love the areas that you mentioned. Uh, of course, I was privileged to serve with Marilyn, too. And I think every person here, um, and John, um, has contributed mightily to uh, this county. And our, we're the, you know, we're really the envy. I 
happy to say this, but we're the envy mm -hmm. of the rest of the state and in many instances the rest of the country. Um, I was thrilled in 2009 when we opened the Clippers ballpark. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that might seem a little bit, you know, well, unsub unsubstantive, but it wasn't. Everybody was there that day, Democrats, Republicans, um, the business community, and we had three women on the commission, on the commission who designed a family-friendly venue. <laughs> I, it was great. The Clippers, yay, the Huntington Park. It, and, and we had the business community fully behind that. Uh, Mary Jo, um, I got approached by Denny White, too. He got me, too. I never knew your story <laughs> until now. <laughs> With me, he used, oh, it's about kids, jobs, and finance. So I had a slightly different trajectory. Uh, and uh, I love that we really got to focus on children. Um, and we did the uh, summer camps to prevent learning loss. That was a tremendous, wonderful program that I hope, I think it still continues. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we did Ready, Set, Learn with United Way to reach the preschool kids, which our president is pushing to get done as we speak. Um, and um, we, uh, we embraced uh, a regional economic development that has served us well. Good grief, we now have that great uh, chip manufacturing plant. Thank you for, I know, probably what you have done to get that here. Wow, we are, you know, it's really wonderful. And then the finance side. Um, I remember that was, that was a tough one. I remember sitting at my desk upstairs in 2008 and looking at how this curve had happened. Um, the sales tax had fallen through the basement. And I thought, we are never going to survive this. We're going to have to close the jails. We're going to have to close the courts. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? We didn't, and we never laid one person off. Our wonderful staff kept going, and we got through that with a AAA bond rating. Wow. So I'm really proud of that, um, proud of the environmental um, initiatives that we had. Uh, those are writ large for years to come and growing. So that's about it. <laughs> that's a <laughs> lot. <laughs> we had fun. Um, we had well, fun. We will learn so much more about um, the things you got to work on and the impact um, as we continue on with the conversation. And um, But thank you for mentioning Ready, Set, Soar and, and, and the initiatives around um, early childhood education, the, something that uh, we continue to work on um, here um, in, in, in partnership with a number of organizations, um, United Way, if you, um, um, Future... Oh my gosh, not Future Ready. Future Ready. Future, future ready. ready. Yeah, yeah. Future Ready yeah. Columbus. Future ready. I'm like, why ready. am I? <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, and if they're getting ready to change again. Um, so, um, yeah, we continue to, to work in that space. Um, but, Marilyn, I'm going to turn yeah. to you real quick. Um, I have the honor of following in your and Don's footsteps. If you could talk about um, what made <coughs> you or motivated you to run for office, and then what do you think has been the um, proudest legacy of, of your service? Thank you. And for me, it was wanting the job. Um, I got to know about the what the job of commissioner was from my work at Morpsey, and I knew it was about helping the most vulnerable people in the community and doing the finances for the county. And I knew it was a big job, and I knew it was an important job. And I knew I had to run about against a long-time incumbent. Um, but I thought I could do it, and I really worked hard to make that happen. Um, I had a very little in terms of help from other than the party regulars in the Democratic Party at that time, but I did it. And it was very difficult to do the race, but I did it. What I'm most proud of is the people of the county, 
and the people of this community called Franklin County and our, our residents. The formation of the Justice Policy and Programs Department was something I was intimately involved in forming. Um, thanks to county administration, thanks to Michael Daniels, who's no longer with the county, but he was intimately involved in working on that. People who had um, been incarcerated needed second chances when they got out of jail or prison and we were giving them those second chances from my office and it seemed clear that we needed to do something bigger and I am grateful to my colleagues John O'Grady um, Paula was there at the time and both of you stepped up and helped create this Office of Justice Policy and Programs with county administration and I am grateful for that. I think it gives hope for people who need those second chances. Absolutely, um, and, and thank you so much for your, your leadership on JPP. We have the current director, uh, Rochelle Pride, who's um, in the in the room with us, and um, I'm just in awe of all the work um, that they are doing in in, in the jails um, as people are re-entering um, our community. Um, it, it definitely is giving people hope um, for the future um, and, and that they can set their lives on a course to, to be a productive and um, a citizen here and um, that they're, you know, thought about and, and prioritized here at the county. So, yeah. again, thank you for your leadership there. And so, Don, <laughs> uh, like Fran and, and myself, we came into this position um, uniquely as um, appointments and, um, you know, rather than being elected. Uh, could you talk to us about uh, what you learned in your time here, even though it was short, um, you got to work on and, and um, had some, uh, you know, some thoughts about how we could move forward and um, that has been implemented. And so if you would be willing to talk about, you know, um, your time here, that would be great. Absolutely. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, so as uh, was stated previously, I served in an interim role, so I was the bridge between Commissioner Brown and Commissioner Crawley. So my tenure was uh, about six to eight weeks. Um, but when I was appointed, even though I knew my tenure would be short, I still wanted my presence here to have made a difference. And so uh, I talked early on with Administrator Wilson, um, with the deputy county administrators, with the dynamic duo that I inherited from mm -hmm. Commissioner Brown of Mike Cochran and Ross Goldsmith and said that, you know, I wanted to put my name on something while I was here and so had the opportunity to partner with the Workforce Development Board of Central Ohio to develop a program that is still being developed to support women who um, had transitions that occurred during COVID as it related to employment, whether planned or unplanned. We know that many women had to push pause because of all the things that were happening with school closures and daycare centers. And so how do we support those residents and getting back into the workforce. And so in partnership with the Workforce Development Board, um, through the generous uh, investment of the commissioners, um, we are able to put together some cohorts of women who will be able to uh, come back into the workforce and be fully supported. And so right now we're at the phase of focus groups where we're talking to women who have lived experience to find out what it is that they really would like to see in these cohorts, what support they need, and then we'll move towards uh, making sure we can provide that. So really excited to have been part of that effort. I'm um, just a very small part, many, many partners and collaborators are involved, but just the ability to help support women. I remember when I was in um, college, I went to Hampton University in Virginia, 
and my mom worked for the state and there was a period of time, I think it was maybe in between administrations where she was laid off. And so, you know, it could have been very real for me to have to pack up my bags and come back home and, and not be able to finish school. But through um, the support of her community, our community and her network, she was able to, to regain employment. So just being able to be part of an effort that will support women and making sure they can continue to provide for their family and have that continuity uh, was re really critical. Yeah, that's fantastic. I mean, and it's a perfect segue to my next question as we were talking about helping to support women. Um, and so I'm, I'm often asked for professional advice about, um, especially from women looking to serve their community, um, whether in an elected position or just as a public servant. And so, um, Mary Jo, if you would be willing to, to share, um, you know, as a former member of con uh, Congress, um, what words of advice or wisdom uh, was bestowed upon you that you took to heart and that you still hold with you? I, I would ask, like, what would you say to women who are starting in their career, but you just said, run, don't wait to be asked. <laughs> Men don't wait to be asked, just do it. But outside of just uh, um, elected, just public service, what, what uh, was shared with you and what would you share with others? When, when I was running for Congress, there were some specific women's groups that were very helpful and supportive and gave good advice about running and running a, as a woman and what kind of things that women might face that men might not face. That, that was very, very useful. I mean, Emily's List has a wonderful training for women running for higher office. Um, and they also have a state counterpart that helps women running for offices in their local communities. So for Democratic women running, I would suggest contacting Emily's List. I would hope that the Republican Party has a counterpart to that for Republican women. Um, but I think, you know, sometimes women uh, face barriers that men don't face. I remember screening before one particular editorial board and was pretty much point blank told that my children needed me at home and I needed to be at home and not running for office or probably even in the workplace. And my children were even not that young at the time. It's not like that they were babes in arms or toddlers. Um, they were in middle and high school at the time. Um, so I, I just could not imagine a man being told you have a middle school child. You need to not run for office. Um, so, you know, we need to be supportive of each other as women. I think women still need that, that support from each other. Um, when I was elected to county commission, I followed in the footsteps of Dorothy Teeter, and she was very welcoming, invited me down before I was sworn in, showed me around the county, introduced me to people, showed me the office and offered her advice, and I was very appreciative of that. So I think uh, women supporting each other is critically important. Thank you, Dorothy. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Paula, what would you say um, to those who are looking to serve their community, um, elected or just as a public servant in general, um, and if you're willing to share what was the most, um, the important piece of advice that has been shared with you? Oh boy, uh, there's so many pieces of advice <laughs> from many people sitting out here today, uh, maybe watching on Facebook. Um, uh, Mary Jo, I want to thank you for welcoming me to the commission. Uh, and Mary Jo opened a whole new world of um, animal care. I never really thought about it a whole lot. And I think that's important to remember, um, that there are creatures out there in our environment um, who deserve um, our support. And really, um, it, it's the small things, um, if not you know, the things that hit you in the face uh, every single day uh, uh, as we watch what's happening in Ukraine, um, the horrendous tragedy there. But it's the little things and the little bits of advice that add up um, and certainly, I learned a lot from Don Brown. Uh, Don, uh, I talked about how we kept the AAA bond rating. Uh, if it weren't for our county administrator, our budget staff, uh, which is where Ken uh, served at that time, 
uh, we would have been in terrible shape. Um, talk about good advice, great advice. Uh, and then we went on to pass that along to um, the uh, counties around the country. We were looked up to, and, and that meant a lot in terms of recruiting employers um, to expand or uh, grow the jobs here. Uh, the women who have given me the best advice are across party lines. Um, I count as friends forever people like uh, Mary Ann Krause in Upper Arlington, Virginia Barney, my dear friend Ann Dorian Lanzati sitting out here, um, and um, as well as those of you. Uh, Don, I worked with your mother and your father, <laughs> and they gave good advice. And it, I still think we have far to go. I think we have to, we have, to have good child care. I applaud what you've done, um, Erica, since in, in, in Maryland, since encountering COVID. But that's an area where we need to keep pressing forward. We need good preschools, child care, and the child care tax credit, uh, which we had for a little bit. And that helps everybody. It certainly helps women, but it helps everybody. I'll stop there. Thank you. Um... Dorothy, um, so, and you talked about serving um, at a time um, where there was far more men um, in office than, than women, still kind of the case, but different um, time in history. Um, what advice would you give a woman, um, and can you describe a, a time where you experienced resistance leading men? Um, I remember when I first got on city, come to city council, sitting there thinking I was the only woman, but I was elected and I had led the ticket that year. Um, but I sat there thinking, I'm as smart as these guys are. <laughs> and I think that's part of it. <laughs> My son's laughing. Um, <laughs> but um, I think that's that's part of it is to have self-confidence in yourself and be able to think you, you're just as good as the guys are and you have something to contribute regardless of what they think. And you know, not every idea that some guy puts up is, is great, <laughs> I'll put it that way. <laughs> but but uh, I, think, I think to have the self-confidence and that's where, it come, that's where it comes having women's groups together and um, uh, to just have that fortification behind you because when I was in there were so few women that it was kind of hard um, but I remember um, and it doesn't last forever because I remember when I ran for commissioner they asked my husband first maybe I said that um, and so uh, I had to I had to, to uh, stand up for myself that yes I ought to do this and I don't know it's just that my husband did say to me when I was first elected to city council <coughs> he said now remember you were elected by men and women <laughs> not just women <laughs> and uh, so I've kind of remembered that all these years. <laughs> That we can't be one-sided on this when you're in elected office. You're you're there for all the people. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, I'm I'm going to ask you a question, Marilyn. That kind of um, goes off of what uh, Dorothy just said, or her husband's comment about being elected by women and men. Um, and I know you know you have. Uh, 14 solid years of service just here as um, the Board of Commissioners, so I know you have a, a lot of different experiences you can draw on, but uh, can you share a time where you persevered and where you believe you were a better contributor because you were a female mm. commissioner? Hmm. <laughs> That's a tough that's a tough one. Mm -hmm. I think just who I am. I've never been any different in any role I've ever been in. So I don't know that I'd be any different. Um, I'm compassionate. I'm empath 
empathetic. I am, and and I know men that are that too. So it's hard to say it's because I'm a woman. Um, I have many friends who are men who I draw a lot of strength from, and I have many friends who are men. So it's hard to say it's because I'm a woman. Um, I think being a woman sitting on a board of all men, um, which I've done, um, allowed me to speak up in ways that some of the men didn't want to hear sometimes, <laughs> but I don't know that it was because I was the woman in the room. It probably was, but um, they just weren't as interested in hearing sometimes what I wanted to say. <laughs> Um, I, because I was talking about the human side of an equation uh, rather than something that they wanted to talk about. I was talking about the people, and I was talking about how something they wanted to do affected the people in the community rather than something less human than that so I don't know no I appreciate that we heard earlier today from the women's fund obviously i um, talking about um, the pay difference um, but that yeah. you know just how women contribute sometimes differently or we come up with more family friendly policies and, and things like that um, and obviously you know there are men who are um, I think probably more so in today's um, age than in the past who get the um, family-centered approach, human-centered approach, um, versus, you know, maybe just dollars and cents. And so I appreciate that response. Um, Don, I'll turn to you real quick. You, Fran, and, and, and Dorothy have um, a different perspective coming from the city and the, and the county um, as far as work experience. Can you tell us um, how they differ and what attributes made you successful in, in both um, at the city and at the county? Sure, I'm happy to answer that. Before I do, I just wanted to go back to the previous question and um, when Mary Jo mentioned Emily's List, it reminded me, and I don't know if Marilyn remembers this, but we were in an Emily's List training many years ago oh, when you yes. were still at Morpsey. Absolutely. And so um, I remember not too long after that when she threw her hat in the ring for commissioner, I was like, oh, she really took that training to heart. She's like ready to roll. Um, but to that point, you know, it's just a reminder that we need women at many different tables, whether it's an elected official or it's at the policy table or the budget table. There are so many places to make impact and have influence. And it's really important that people understand what their unique gifting is and then serve in that capacity. So when you're thinking about service opportunities, you know, what gets you excited? Everyone might not want to be out front like an elected official, mm -hmm. but there's still something to contribute to the good of the whole. Um, I also think about, you know, as people are, are thinking about moving into public service, whether it's volunteering at your kid's school or maybe a leadership role on your area commission or um, something like that, if there's something that gives you a little bit of fear, then that probably means it's the right thing to do. Um, there's a, a leadership guru, uh, John Maxwell, and I've been trained as a, a John Maxwell speaker, trainer, and coach. And one of my favorite sayings that he uses is, jump and your wings will grow. And so for people, whether it's women or men, whoever it is, if you're thinking about doing something, just jump. I mean, you want to do it planfully. You don't want to be, you know, haphazard. You don't want to jump without your shoot. Um, but just jump and see what happens. And so just move past that fear um, because there's something that you have to offer. Um, in terms of the city county, um, you know, they are two different entities, but the goals are the same. And that's to make life better for people who live in our community um, to ensure that people are not just surviving but thriving. 
and so while my background had been city government, I was very familiar with city processes. Coming over to the county, um, a lot of similarities in that you have dedicated people, elected, appointed staff um, who are just in this do good work, who want to see things be better. And so that that is what was very inspiring to me when I worked at the city and then also when I had the opportunity to be part of the county family for a short time. I appreciate that. That um, will come up in our, our next and final question um, about the do good work. Um, and so we'll talk more about that in a second. But I want to ask you, Fran, um, <laughs> what would you say was your or is your um, superpower for meeting resistance um, that might come from men? And, um, you know, what makes you successful in, in the both roles that you served at the county and then going to the city? Talk about a parachute. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a few. <laughs> uh, you know, I started out in, in, uh, in the early 70s uh, on council, and there wasn't a woman at, on that, in that venue for, at all. And so it was tough. Uh, I know I remember running against, I think it was 13 in a primary or something like that, and, and it, it, it was tough, it was tough. And a mother of five, ooh, you know, that's, that was spooky. <laughs> but, uh, but I managed to, I remember uh, at my first interview with the Dispatch Editorial Board back in 71, okay, young lady, why do you think that you're going to be a... a, a can work on council or serve on council. You don't know anything about anything about uh, sewers and all that stuff. I said, I want you to know I've lived in Northland and I have survived about several several floods, and I know that there's some problems that uh, that should have been taken that weren't taken. And so you know, by golly, somebody listened because they endorsed me, and I think that was that was probably the the most remarkable thing that happened in '71 in Columbus. <laughs> If, if you look at from where, 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 where they were sitting and where I was sitting. But anyway, uh, with, with all those um, problems coming at you, um, I think a woman has to be very strong in herself. You have to believe in yourself. You have to know, uh, you know, your, your spouse has to be an absolute uh, angel, which mine is and still is up in heaven. Uh, but he, he, Dick understood the process. He understood what we were going through. Our children all participated. Um, and I, I see pictures of them now uh, down in the, in, the, in the lower level stuffing envelopes and running around for other candidates. And we always tried to help the next guy up. The next guy up was the one we had. And then when I had the opportunity in to uh, be chairman of the, of the party, and that was really uh, it's sort of like a, a chairman of the Titanic at that time. But, <laughs> but, or, <laughs> but, uh, but, but I survived. I survived. You know, and I said, just because I'm a woman doesn't mean I can't get the best candidates to run. And if you look at some of the judges that I helped and taught and said, you know, Ann Taylor, you've got, to, you've got to run. You've got to run. You have to run at 2 in the morning. Or uh, Mary, Mary Ellen O'Shaughnessy, you've got to run. You know, it's only 5 in the morning, and I need to have those ballots filled, <laughs> filled by 3 o'clock for filing. And I think that they gave me the strength. I didn't give them strength. They gave me strength. And, and of course, the guys would just sit back and say, oh, you know, we got this crazy lady running for chairman of the party, you know. But you know what? We had successful seven or eight years, and it was good. And we had good people running and good women, uh, certainly, uh, to, to speak for, uh, for the party and, and to step up to the table. So you got to be prepared to step up to the table. you got to be, be also not afraid to make a decision and live with that decision because sometimes you'll wake up in the middle of the night and say, did I make the right decision? Was that, was that a good vote or a bad vote or whatever it was? But I made it. And so I've always kind of uh, uh, protected myself around the fact that I could make a decision and live with it. And I think that that's the most important thing you got to look at. That's that's kind of my parachute stories. <laughs> a couple a couple in there. I went I went for Congress almost, but uh, I made that decision myself, and and uh, the family was always a part of it. But uh, you know nobody had to talk me into uh, into it. So it makes it it, it makes uh, sense when you make your own decision. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> um, so uh, 
you know, our this is going to be in the interest of time. Our, our last question um, that I'll pose to everyone here on the panel, um, and for me as the newest member of um, the Board of Commissioners and as a former legislator, I often think about. Um, my legacy and what brings me the greatest sat satisfaction and fulfillment. And my time in, um, as an elected official has been short. I was I ran in 2017, 2018, and got elected in 2018, and went into the House and House of Representatives in 2019, representing the east and southeast part of um, Franklin County. Um, and uh, you know, it, it's been challenging, but it's also been rewarding. And I know that um, you know my answer will change over time. Um, and I would like to hear from you all about what you believe has brought you the most satisfaction in public service in general, whether being here at the county or in Congress or a volunteer. But for me, coming from the legislature, um, I think, it, and now at the county, has really just opened my eyes to the, the fact that um, our neighbors in the community are dealing with issues and they can't wait, you know, like for us to be in the state house or in the legislature, um, you know, having to really work hard to convince people to do right for the right reasons is hard and exhausting, um, and it's sad. Um, and you often <laughs> question, like, why am I here? Why do I keep showing up and, like, things aren't going anywhere or happening? But, <laughs> and, and, and they do here and there, but it takes something and, and it's hard. And, um, but coming to the county and having that experience, and, and I, I, I won't say I got some wins, the, my neighbors in the district got some wins and follow us in the legislature, but coming here at the county, um, and seeing, working with my colleagues and all of the things that have um, made the county what it's today with you all, um, your input, input, your leadership and, and, and wisdom really has um, highlighted that we have to walk and chew gum, you know, <laughs> as elected officials. Um, people have many needs that need to be addressed um, at the same time. And um, we really try to meet those needs. Uh, we can't be everything to everybody, but I do. Uh, what brings me joy is that I know that I serve with um, people who wake up, like, how can we um, solve a problem for someone today? How can we make life better today? Um, for our neighbors, and that brings me joy. I don't wake up and say, what am I doing? Why am I coming here today? I look forward to coming here um, because it, like, we're not winning. The, the people are winning. They get to win every day by um, not being just able to survive, but really thrive. We work on people being able to rise and thrive every day. So that's what brings me joy um, and satisfaction. And so if you all would be willing to share what has been brought you the most satisfaction in your time um, in, in public service. And we'll start with Paula. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. There's so many instances. It was great getting the Darby Accord um, done <laughs> uh, across party jurisdiction lines um, and and working towards clean air and clean water uh, because that matters every single day to people. Um, they can raise their kids in their home and not fear uh, getting sick because of bad air, bad water. Um, now I really was very proud of being on President Obama's task force on climate preparedness and resilience. It's not one that you think about every minute. We think climate change is off there. Uh, but it isn't. It's right in front of us right now. And many of those um, recommendations that we delivered to Vice President Biden at the time in his green office uh, in the Eisenhower Executive Office building are now being implemented. So um, I think it's important to look at the big picture as well as those everyday things, clean air, clean water, the sewer <laughs> systems have to work right. Uh, and, and we replaced, uh, speaking of the south uh, area of the county, we uh, worked on replacing many of those broken systems uh, and making sure that um, people were protected from floods. But then we looked at the bigger picture, too, and um, it was a pleasure to work and watch Mary Jo work in the Congress, um, really pushing uh, forward the health care issues that, you know, really she put the building blocks in place here and then she took that nationally. 
Uh, and I think it's important to do both of those things, to do the day-to-day -day work, but then not forget the bigger picture, and I think that's what you were getting at, Don. And of course, Dorothy uh, and Fran took on everything all at once <laughs> <laughs> because they had to in that day, uh, and, and you, uh, you accomplished the tower. Um, I don't think it was the Titanic. I think, <laughs> I think uh, you led the way for building the future, Fran. Thank you, I know, because I was a beneficiary of that. And Marilyn, you were a pioneer uh, in uh, taking on the justice issues. Uh, so again, we take on little parts that turn big. And what's better than that? Oh my gosh, it's been, oh, it's just such an honor and blessing. Um, well, thank you for sharing that. Dorothy, do you want to share like what has been the um, most fulfilling part of your time in service? Well, I think that, I think, I, I realize that we have a lot to do as county commissioners with children's issues, children's programs and so forth. And I realize that MRDD, mental health, the whole bit, all those people had something, children's services, had something to do with children, and they weren't talking to each other. They weren't working together at all. So I put together, uh, or I started having meetings. I even got the school board, because my husband was on the school board at that time. And I even got representation from the Columbus schools to meetings to talk, just to, so they know each other, so they could talk to each other about what, they were doing for the children. <coughs> and it ended up at that time to be, and I don't know if they're still there or not, but um, at that time it ended up to be in a statewide children's and, for, and children, children's first council of some sort. I forget the name. I'm sorry, I just can't remember all this stuff that I haven't thought about for a while. <laughs> And uh, but at least they started talking to each other and realizing that they all had a part in what they do for children. And I think that was important. That was very important to me at that time. And uh, hopefully it's still going on. <laughs> it is. A lot of it is. <laughs> so. Well, thank you, Dorothy. Um, uh, Mary Jo? Well, thank you. Um, the county has is a great place to serve, and you have incredible opportunities to have a real impact on community life. And the feeling that um, of satisfaction that I got that you know we accomplished something that did improve community life, especially for people who were left out of the system. Mm -hmm. Whether it's smaller things like sidewalks for the Urban Crest community, or uh, making the justice system work better by improving appointed council fees to make sure that everybody can have right to effective assistance of counsel, to improving the community with health care, um, supporting the federally qualified health, health system here, focusing on vaccines and prevention and primary care, improving the community, as Paula said, with the Darby Accords and that Darbydale sewer plant. Um, th those were uh, important and big things to protect the environmental health of our community. So uh, all of those things, um, making a difference, uh, gave me an enormous sense of satisfaction being a county commissioner. Well, thank you for sharing. Uh, Don? So I'll point to some work in public service that I did outside of the county mm -hmm. since, my again, my tenure was short. Uh, but I had the opportunity to be the founding executive director of PACT, Partners Achieving mm -hmm. Community Transformation, which is an effort on the Near East Side to help redevelop the Near East Side. It was a partnership of the city, the housing authority, and Ohio State, and really wanting to have a coordinated investment plan for um, the Near East Side. And having grown up on the Near East Side, it was really um, an honor to be part of that work. And um, while there are many, 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 many people and partners who were involved, just driving through the Near East Side now and seeing um, the new Poindexter Village and the redevelopment that's going on around um, down Taylor Avenue, it gives me uh, a sense of pride uh, just knowing that I played a small part in that and knowing that it's impacting neighborhoods. And I think what you said, Commissioner Crawley, was really important that people um, 
there are things people need right now. They can't wait for the task force and the report and you know all the many steps sometimes we take to get to the solution. But I would also offer that when you're in public service, you also have to be okay knowing that the seeds you plant now, you may never be the beneficiary of the Absolutely. shade from that tree. So it's a both and. and um, for people in public service, the work is long and it's hard. <laughs> and sometimes you might do something and it might not be for generations to come that it comes to fruition. Um, but being okay with that and knowing that your job was to plant the seed, right. someone else will come along and water it, someone else will come along and prune it. And then uh, many, many, many years later, there will be the beneficiary of that seed being planted. And in public service, um, you know, some people, I would say, get into it for the wrong reasons because they want that that quick fix or they want to be, you know, in front of the camera or, um, you know, the highlight on the evening news. But you have to also be in it for the long game because it can be brutal and you have to find where your joy is going to come from so that you can keep pressing through in those difficult times. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Um, Fran. I guess uh, the thing that I remember the uh, I, I guess I'm the most pleased with is the uh, is the partnership that we've had for the aging in this community. Uh, we now have one of the most outstanding uh, programs in the country because of our age friendly program, and that's because of the partnership that we've had with the city and the county, and also our villages. Um, I am a recipient of the village uh, right now. Uh, uh, the uh, I was a, a board member of the early village that we had with. Uh, our age-friendly program, and uh, now they're picking me up and taking me to Grant to, to do my PT and, and bringing me back home, and, and it's wonderful to see something that we started really does work. But I do want to say this about the, the whole process of uh, being in office and what you can do. It's not what you do maybe today, but it's what you're going to do tomorrow and, and how's it going to affect everybody. Uh, I can get a call in late at night or on a Friday afternoon at 3 o'clock and it's somebody who's going to lose their apartment, lose their house, a veteran that, that is taking care of three children, uh, grandchildren because of the uh, opiate thing. I mean, it's, it's a whole strain of, of those kind of issues. And where do you make a difference? I think the difference is that you attack each one of those as a personal kind of endeavor and that you put yourself in that person's place and that you can talk to them and say, I can't solve everything, but I might be able to put you in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And so I think those of us who have experienced all of these kind of issues and, and where can we send people and how do we respond to people, it's we're going to respond to you this way. We've set up a, set up a, a wonderful community, and we know where those little where those little go-to people are. That's what I call them. And when we need help, we go to those people, whether it's a community resource center whether it's St. Stephen's, wherever, wherever it is, you've got that resource. And so I like to bring that resource to people, and I think that has really helped me in my many years of whatever I do in uh, public service. So uh, I appreciate the activities around me, which mean all the wonderful people who work in public service. They're the ones that really steer that ship. So I thank them for, for cooperating with me in the little endeavors that I've had. I want to thank all of the women here on the dais for all of their service. Um, it's clear every woman here on the dais has had so much to do with the success of Franklin County, along with the great staff we've had. You know, I served 14 plus years on the commission and I enjoyed every day of it. But what made it so enjoyable was the people, the people of Franklin County, you out there um, in the audience, those of you who work f for the county, our county administration, my staff was the greatest staff, um, Mike Cochran and Ross Goldsmith, my most current staff, but all of my staff. 
What gave me the most joy was really doing the work, um, getting into the work of helping people, doing the work of doing the budget, knowing what those numbers meant was what it meant to help people. And it gave me a great amount of fulfillment. And it every day was different. Every day was important. And, you know, it's the big projects, as Paula said, but it is the smaller projects, too. And it is this, this, the work of county government that is the work of the people of Franklin County. So I, I'm really thankful that Commissioner Crawley scheduled this today, and I'm really thrilled to be here. Thank you. Oh, thank you for sharing. Um, I, I want to say thank you to Public Affairs um, for um, putting this together. Um, it, when they uh, brought the idea um, to me, I, I think we were trying to do it during briefing. I was like, this is going to be too long for a briefing session. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is going to be too long. Um, but let's do you know, something different. So I, I want to say public affairs, thank you for the work that you all did to, to make this happen. Um, and I wish to personally thank each and every one of you for um, your time today, um, but for your contributions and dedication that you've given to our neighbors here in Franklin County and the historical impact that you have um, played in elevating me um, and people like me um, for generations to come. As you said, Don, um, you know, you have planted seeds um, that I get to reap the benefits from <laughs> today. And I hope that um, in my time here, I'm able to plant some seeds yep. that others can benefit from in the, in the future. Um, and not just me as a county commissioner, but you've planted seeds and uh, done work that our county in Central Ohio is reaping the benefits from. So thank you. It is an honor and a privilege to follow in each of your footsteps. Um, and so again, thank you for sharing your stories and your time. I do have one question for you all. Um, and if that's, if I can get a picture with you before you leave today, um, I would appreciate it.